Hello, I'm Pastor Melissa, and thank you for joining me for a daily devotion. It's been such a week of exploring the abundant gifts of Jesus, who self-identified as the resurrection and the life. Each day we've celebrated facets of this infinitely deep and broad and high expression of God's love for us. And you know, the blessings that we've experienced in this very moment is the generosity of God to offer gift after gift after gift so that we can enjoy the kingdom that Jesus came to establish. I don't have to wait until I die. We don't have to wait until heaven opens up or the second coming of Jesus. Nope. The moment that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, you know, it was as if it was a moment extracted out of time and, and it reached deep into our history and far into our future with all of the fullness of the truth that is Jesus, the firstborn child of God, constantly restoring all of creation back to its original design. Good and very good indeed. I feel best, I feel blessed because this is a faith statement for me. I do have the whole book of the Bible that tells me the stories and shares the doctrine and, and the theology, the eschatology and the Christology that informs my faith. It has all the laws and the principles that guide my daily living, you know, when I remember to live by them, of course. But it all had to start with a kernel of faith before I was even willing to dig deeper and accept that what I believe is Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Where did that faith come from? I mean, my parents were faithful. Am I blessed because my parents believed? I don't think so. I had to actually deconstruct the faith of my upbringing because it just wasn't broad enough to incorporate all the inconsistencies that I saw as I navigated the world as an adult. And did that, so maybe that faith came because I have invested so much of my life in the church. Mm -mm, definitely not, <laughs> because I've, I've seen the church behave poorly in direct contrast to the gospel teachings of Jesus. Nope, if the church were responsible for people's faith, that would leave far too many people wanting. Again, it's all a faith statement. And I'm, so here's my faith statement. I believe that there was a nugget of faith planted in me somewhere along the journey and God continues to nurture it and to water it through good days and bad and through and nurture it further and through hurtful relationships through some of my successes and my failures all of life's occasions serve to feed the first gift of faith that may, in fact, have been given to me as a birthright, stamped on my heart in the image of God. I don't know. The writer of Galatians in chapter 2, verse 20 says, It is no longer I who live, but it is who Christ 
who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, this is a faith statement. But I believe that the writer is saying, we receive the gift of Jesus' faith. Not the faith of family, or the faith of religion, or the faith of our own imagination. No. The faith that Jesus embodied and continues to gift to us. That is the faith by which our faith is informed. And it's all a faith statement. You choose to believe as God has given you the gift of faith. Will you pray with me? God, increase my faith. Give me the faith to believe that you inhabit my life and that my life is a testimony to the gift of Jesus' faith granted to me. Amen. Mm -hmm.